Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined by Shaka Hislop and Stevie Nicholl. Lots going on today. Later on in the show, we reflect on that brilliant match between Brighton and Manchester City. We'll kick things off, though, at the Santiago Bernabeu. This is the first home game, of course, for Real Madrid since Vinicius Jr. was racially abused in that clash against Valencia. Uh, Real Madrid, of course, can't catch Barca at the top of the table. Rio safe as well. For more on this, I want to welcome in um, Alex Kirkland is with us uh, from Spain. Alex, you were at the game. As you were saying during the half-time, it's difficult to see exactly what was going on in that drop ball situation. I imagine that is one of the big talking points, certainly from what happened on the pitch in this tie. Yes, as we were saying, what was on the pitch was really overshadowed by what happened off it. But in terms of the on-the-field on incidents, that's certainly one of the talking points. Rio not happy. Questions, I guess, about sportsmanship and whether Madrid should have done what they did. Other people might say that Madrid was simply being smart. And Tony Cross, who is one of the smartest footballers around, was simply simply being clever and taking advantage of the situation and seeing if he could get away with it. And yes, maybe Rio were a little bit sleepy and, and didn't react quickly. And it's, it's, a, it's a drop ball for them. It's their ball. They were in control of the ball. So it's the rule that has to be changed. Well, there's no rule, is it? There's never going to be a rule. It's all down to sportsmanship. Well, maybe, well, you, well, well ah. I'm sorry. Well, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't make it about sportsmanship. But Tony Cruz should give that ball back, shouldn't he, to a Ryan no. player? No? no, they had the ball. It was their ball. From, from the set piece, the ball falls to Real Madrid. And they're in comfortable control um, when they notice the, the, the Rio player down. Um, my, my only kind of... Why well, well, I'm in a little bit of, of, of uncertainty about this is more times than not, even though that's exactly where Real had the ball when, when play was stopped, more times than not, you, well, you don't have to go all the way back to Courtois, but you go back a little bit and, and, and then start. But they, I, it, it was Real Madrid's ball. It, they, it, was there, it, was theirs, it was theirs to keep. Right. They were in comfortable p possession. Nobody from Rio anywhere around. A Rio player goes down to get treatment. Um, so in, in, in the one sense, you can very easily make the argument for Real to continue as they have. I, I just feel that more times than not, you would move the ball back voluntarily um, by playing at 10 or 20 yards and then build from there. Uh, as Alex mentioned, though, really what was on the pitch, it was all about Vinicius Jr. off the pitch and what's been going on over the last few days. Remember, when we went live on Sunday as this was all breaking, we were shocked. Shaka described it as tone deaf. The Tebas reaction, who is, of course, La Liga president, almost getting into a, to a fight with Vinicius Jr. Before you criticise and insult La Liga, you need to inform yourself well, Vinny Jr., don't let yourself be manipulated. Of course, so much backlash at that Twitter exchange. On Wednesday, he went one step to try and put things right. Um, he said, I think the message and the intention I had was not understood by a significant number of people, especially in Brazil. I did not want to attack Vinicius, but if most people understood it that way, I need to apologize. It was not my intention. I expressed myself badly at a bad time. Uh, he then continued, this is with Globo, the uh, Brazilian broadcaster. Are there racist insults directed at Vinicius? No doubt. The president of La Liga is aware. We found them many years ago and I will do the same now. In defense of Vinicius and the players in Spain or anyone else who faces racism. It has always been my conduct and always will be. I'm not going to change. I apologize if you misinterpreted the tweet. It wasn't my intention. Uh, Alex is uh, with us. Alex, what's interesting about this is that this is Tebas, who we know is bullish and we know is very strong in his opinions, but we don't see very often Tebas coming out and apologising, in the, even in this horrible manner. He's had to backtrack, hasn't he, for the reputation of not only himself, but La Liga. Yeah, I think there's been a recognition that the tone of those tweets was wrong, that the focus and the emphasis of those tweets were, were wrong, because it was almost making out Vinicius to be, I don't know, somehow a part of the, the problem here and not the victim, which is exactly what, what he is. So I think there's been a recognition there, whether it's Tebas himself, whether it's uh, the people around Tebas who've, who've had a word with him and said, look, you need to apologise for this. You know, this, 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 this looked really, really poor and it added to what was already a disastrous image for La Liga of, of, of racism, these racist incidents happening time and time again and it not being dealt with. It made a bad situation, an awful situation, even worse, I think. And so there's been a recognition of that, that, like I say, Tebas was was wrong in terms of his tone, was wrong in terms of his focus. And this really, I think, has been about kind of cleaning up the, the mess that, that he made, these interviews that he's given today, including to our colleagues at ESPN 
Brazil. So it's welcome. We're going to hear more from Tebas as well over the course of the week. He's holding a press conference tomorrow um, here in Madrid that he'll be, I think, saying more of the same and tr really trying to change the, uh, the focus away from some things that he said on Twitter that he probably shouldn't have said, or at least how he said them. And instead, in terms of the more positive side of what has happened in the last couple of days, which is the arrests that have been made, the punishment that's been handed out to, to Valencia as well, because those are the really concrete steps that have been taken over the last couple of days that I think are what Vinicius Jr. wanted to see. You know, what we saw today at the Bernabeu was great and important in terms of showing support for, for Vinicius Jr. But I think what's really important, like I say, is those arrests and that, that quite severe punishment that we've seen for, for Valencia, which is what Vinicius has been asking for. Thank goodness I'm off tomorrow. Because you know Tebas is going to say something ridiculous in you, his press you mean, conference. You mean more ridiculous than Sunday, and then, and then <laughs> even more ridiculous than that, that half-baked apology? Listen, the, the more I see this Tebas apology, the, more, the, 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 worse, the worse it gets. First of all, I, and just to be a little bit flippant uh, uh, about it, as, as Sid was saying yesterday, it's never good when the La Liga president is referring to himself as the La Liga president. <laughs> you, don't, you don't speak about yourself in, in, in the third, third party. <laughs> that, that, that's just for starters. Second of all, it's, it's never good when your apology is, I'm sorry people misinterpreted me. People misinterpreted you because you said nonsense. And to, to that point, I, I don't think anybody misinterpreted you at all. Everybody heard exactly what you were trying to say all along. And then, and then this... People misinterpreted me, especially people in Brazil. No, everybody <laughs> with two brain cells that rubbed together heard what, what, what you were trying to say and, 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 and lash out against you. It's not about a misinterpretation. It's not about a misinterpretation by a certain sector of, of, of people. It's about you making a really poor statement at the worst possible time and, and finding the, the, and, and getting the retribution for it. Apologize for that. Just say, I was wrong. I got this totally wrong. Don't try to put this on, on anybody else. All that being said, and, and as, as critical as I am of Tebas and, and, and that apology, it is so much better than everything we've seen from Spanish football. Yeah. So it, it, the bar was low. The, the bar was very low. So while it was awful, it is so much better than everything that, that preceded it. So at least there's some movement in the right direction. Uh, go on, see what you want to say. I'm just trying to figure out how does, how does somebody like Tebas, being the president of La Liga, how does he get away with just spouting all this nonsense time after mm. time? Yeah. And it doesn't seem as though there's any repercussions against him and the position that he's in. How does he get away with this all the time? Well, I think he's, uh, he's definitely running out of, uh, of time, for sure, <laughs> given what we've seen. Um, I want to welcome uh, Kieran Gibbs into the conversation. Kieran, given what we've seen not this weekend, but of course over the last few seasons in Spain, if you were still playing... Would that sort of behaviour from the fans be off-putting in your decision to, to move to Spain? Good question. I think, I mean, obviously all of the players are going to be aware, right? All of the, everyone probably in the world has seen that in the world football. Um, I think they, I think if I was a player that was linked to a club um, in Spain, I think I don't think it would have influenced my decision to go to the league. Um, I think it would it would it would affect my decision to go to the club, though. Um, I don't think I don't think that putting myself in in that position would. Uh, I think that that would be a step too far for me. Uh, but everyone's different, you know. And you know you have players linked like Mbappe, Bellingham, uh, and these guys are so loved uh, all over the world, and they they have the ability to change the opinions of of the ignorant um, because they're that special. So I think everyone's different. Um, I think I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be late if I was linked to go to Valencia. I think that would be a tough decision. I, I think it would. I, I think if it were a choice between going to a Spanish club and, and let's not even say all things equal b between going to a Spanish club and going to an English club, let's say the money I, I'm, I'm going to make a little bit more money in Spain, but not significantly so. Um, and we're talking about clubs outside of Real Madrid and Barcelona that have their, their own appeal regardless. Um, but Valencia, we're talking about Valencia here. Let's say I am linked with, with Valencia and it's a choice between Valencia and I'll, I'll use West Ham. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm only going to make 
10, maybe 15% less at West Ham. I go to West Ham. I, 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 as a black player, I go to West Ham. And you all, we all, while we're discussing this, and we're discussing Vinicius Jr. and his standing in, in Spanish football and, and in world football, um, and we're talking Brazil, Brazil is the largest exporters of footballers in the world. So now, if, as you go to Brazil searching out talent, if there's any kind of parity between Spanish clubs and, and, and clubs from some other country interested in one of those talents, I, I, I think that there's a, a real decision to be made. It's not, it's not that straightforward. It's, uh, not, it's not just a player's, player's point of view, the family. Yeah. Are, yeah. You, going to, are yeah. you going to take your wife and kids to a game and, and, sit, and, and sit and listen, listen to that? So that has to come into it as well, big time. Uh, and we've discussed this, Alex, how brave this was for Venetius to stand up uh, against the racists and obviously bring all this attention towards him. But is this a moment now in which La Liga has to wake up for the sake of the success of the league in the future if you're going to attract your big names like your Bellinghams or your Mbappes? Because if you don't, people aren't going to be watching anymore. Well, this is what La Liga have to avoid at all costs, I think, is this discussion that we are having, which is essentially in the minds of people linking La Liga and racism. It couldn't be more damaging for, for La Liga as a, as a brand as they look to, to grow globally. They need to do whatever it takes to change that perception. If that perception continues to grow in people's minds, I can't think of anything more damaging for La Liga globally. And it does make you wonder how much of a role it would play in the minds of players who might be thinking about coming to... So La Liga, you mentioned Jude Bellingham. He's been, you know, linked to Real Madrid. He's been linked to Manchester City. He's weighing up that that, that decision pretty much as we as we as we speak. Well, how much would issues like this come to to play? And I just think it's it's so so damaging for La Liga and for La Liga clubs. I think they're aware of that. I think they've seen that from the scale of the global outcry here, and they need to they need to show everybody that they're taking this seriously. But they are doing what they everything that they can to, to deal with it. Because if not uh, for players, for fans, for, for sponsors, for brands, uh, for, for everybody, the league is going to have this association with, with racism, which, like I say, just, just couldn't be more, more toxic for, for them as a, as a brand and couldn't make it more difficult for them to, to continue to, to grow and compete with the Premier League. This is maybe a better question for Alec. How, at what point would the government get involved in this? Because... Yes, we're talking about La Liga, we're talking about football, but eventually, as a country, it comes into question, right? So what? Yeah. when does the government start getting involved, Alec? They have spoken about it this week. The Prime Minister, Pedro Sanchez, came out and, and spoke about it and condemns what had happened at Valencia. We are in the middle, actually, of um, campaigning for local elections right now, so it, it, it's, a, it's a time when there's a lot of politics out there and in, in the media, and people have been talking about this and the government has its role through the sports ministry which of course is one of the bodies that sort of supervises and governs spanish football you've got the sports ministry and you've got the federation and you've got la liga but it's important for it goes all the way to the very top because i mean i talk about kind of the image and the brand of la liga it's beyond that isn't it it's about the image and the brand of spain as a country mm -hmm. people are talking about spanish football Vinicius junior said in one of his instagram statements the other day that spain in brazil is now viewed as a racist country he said that there's this perception that Spain is racist. So, like I say, you're right. This goes far beyond football. This is about the image of, of a country kind of on, on the world stage. That's where we've got to. And that's something that I think that concerns and affects absolutely everybody here. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.